All right, guys, we're back again with another great episode of PFREI. I'm your host, Fuquan Bilal, and today we have a special guest, Heather. Don't tell me if I'm going to screw this up. It's Dreves, right? It's Dreves. Dreves. Heather <laughs> Dreves. Right. Now, you can punish me later when you see me because we, we're traveling the same circle and I should know that. That's but, okay. okay. So Heather Dreves from Secured Investment Corp. So today we're going to talk a little bit about my topic and it's going to be uh, raising capital. Heather has been doing a great job with that with Secure, Secure Investment Corp. We'll talk a little bit about the challenges, the good, bad, and the ugly. And uh, just how you guys started uh, in the industry, if you wouldn't mind sharing your personal story with the yeah. group so they can get a little flavor of your background, then we can dive into the questions. Absolutely. Well, um, you know, honestly, it's funny how everybody's paths are different, you know, how they, they end up in this industry. And, you know, mine was kind of by luck. Um, my parents were very active real estate investors. You know, they did have eight to five jobs, but my dad and mom always set an example for me and my siblings, you know, in order to get ahead and create wealth for yourself, there was great opportunity in real estate. And so, you know, I grew up around it, not fully really understanding the opportunities, but I was fortunate enough to have a friend in the private money industry. And uh, my husband and I have two boys. And, you know, when we decided to have children, um, it was our goal for me to stay home with them until they were in school full time. So once our youngest son um, ended up, you know, in kindergarten, I, I quickly decided I wanted to go back out into the workforce. And I had a friend that was in private money. He was a loan officer. And so he asked me to come on board with them. I had a little bit of sales experience and it was very eye opening. You know, I think especially like my parents generation in the past, um, private money was kind of a, a hidden secret. You know, whether you were obtaining private money or you were an investor that was lending their money. Um, when I got into the industry, a lot of my clients that I worked with was really from the investor side. And they were funny, you know, I would say, Hey, do you have any friends? Well, I don't want to tell everybody because then there's not enough deals to go around. So <laughs> I always thought that was interesting. Um, but it was eye opening to me to see how much that opportunity opens up to whether you're an active real estate investor, and you're taking down the assets, the opportunity for the funding outside of more traditional banks and, and whatnot. Or if you were an investor that was looking to diversify your portfolio, you know, outside of more traditional stocks and, you know, those types of um, opportunities that you might um, be exposed to, like through a financial advisor. And so um, I just kind of fell in love with it. And it's a little addicting, to be honest. Um, I love being help, able to help my clients. So I, I kind of started from the ground up in private money. I did everything from closing, escrow. Um, I quickly decided that I really liked the investor side of it and helping my clients create wealth for themselves and, and generational wealth for their family. So I obtained my securities license and the rest is kind of history. I, I thought I was going to get out of the industry after 2008. I think a lot of us took our bumps and bruises, um, but decided that actually wasn't the path I wanted to go. I was going to go more traditional banking and decided I, I couldn't get away and let go of the private money side of things. So here I am, you know, multiple years later and, and still raising capital. And I'm a, an active real estate investor myself. And this world has opened a lot of opportunities for myself and my family too. So um, like I said, it's a little addicting once you get into it. It sucks you in a little bit. Yeah, I love it. It's it's really um, fascinating journey that you were on, um, you know, learning the alternative side and sticking with it. And not selling out to the traditional side. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I felt like a traitor. I was like, I don't think I can do this. <laughs> yeah, and and I mean, through your journey, um, you know, you you guys, you did some trustee stuff, raised quote was a hundred million or more doing trustees, and uh, thirty million in capital through the fund you're currently with now. So let's let's just dive into that a little bit. I know that the trustees a lot of work, right, versus a fund. And always yeah. tell people running a fund is like, it's a whole separate business. You know, it's it not, it's, it's just a beast. So let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah. When I came on board 10 years ago, um, I dialed for dollars is what I did. So we, you know, we had the, the lending arm of our company where we provided the active real estate investors with the funding. That process looked like, you know, an underwriting process, essentially. So once it cleared underwriting, you know, we checked all the boxes then I was on the phone dialing for dollars. You know, I have this huge database of guys 
and women that, that bought trust deeds from me and they like, you know, they like the asset class. It's, you know, it's a piece of actual tangible real estate that's backing their money. Yes, you're relying on a borrower to make their payments, but at the end of the day, if things go sideways and that borrower can't, you know, meet their obligations, you at least have that piece of real estate backing it. And so I would dial for dollars and, and, and it worked great. We were always able to fund our deals, but it's a very inefficient process, right? So you've got a borrower ready to close and they've got a smoking deal and they don't have time to wait, you know, and then on the other side of it, you're working with clients that have IRA accounts. It takes time to move money around. And so we decided very quickly nine years ago that we were going to open a fund. It was more efficient for our borrowers and brokers, and we were able to service them, you know, get their deals closed for them. But on the investor side of it, it gave us the ability to work with our people um, and allow them to do their due diligence. Because I tell people, if you're going to buy trustees, there's great opportunity, just do your due diligence. You know, you need to have your own due diligence and checklist. And I don't expect someone to make a decision in an hour, you know? And so funding them on our funds gave us the ability to give them time to do their due diligence. And then you know, and you probably know this and can attest to this. We have a lot of clients that just don't want to deal with the headaches that sometimes trustees come along. So yeah. the fund was a good option for them because they could put their money in it. It's diversified. It's always deployed. So it was kind of the best of all these different worlds. We were able to really have the ability to service just about any of our clients, um, you know, depending upon what their investment strategy was and what their goals were. Yeah. So you talked about you're an active real estate investor yourself mm -hmm. as well. I mean, you see these deals coming along and you know the importance of it, of building a portfolio and building long-term wealth from your family. Um, you know, why are you passionate for real estate investing? Like what gave you that passion to kind of stick yeah. with it? Especially well, after 2008, you had to have <laughs> some passion to stick with it. <laughs> I see the opportunity, you know, I, I, I know, and I tell my kids this, I've got young adult children and it's like, yeah, it's important to have a job and be able to provide you know, the things that you want for your own family, but to get ahead and create wealth for yourself, you got to have side hustles, right? And that, that can be, you know, like my husband and I, the first few deals we did, we fixed and flipped and they were great. We made good money. Um, I, I joke that we didn't look like Chip and Joanna. It's not as glamorous <laughs> as it looks on TV. And the mistakes we made was we tried to do it ourselves. So we're working our day jobs Wow! every night and weekend there. And I'm like, this sucks. I hate doing tile. I don't want to do this again. So then we transitioned to rentals, you know, which for us gives us some tax benefits and is just kind of our little nest egg of rental properties. Um, but you live and learn. You, you know, so I, I see the passion. I guess my passion comes from my end goal. You know, I want to leave a legacy for my kids. And I also want to set a good example for my kids. I don't want to just give it to them. Yeah. You know, our oldest son is a fireman. I go, oh my God, what a perfect opportunity. You were three on and one off. Is he three on and one off? Uh, he, one yes. on and three off, whatever. I know it's something. Yeah. He took, he basically works two 24 hour shifts a week. Okay. And I said, that's perfect. a perfect job to have this kind of a side hustle. And so I just, you know, I believe so strong that you aren't going to get ahead of, in this world just having an eight to five. I mean, none of us are like that. And so, you know, being able to leave a legacy, but also set a good example for my kids of what hard work does and, you know, um, being an active, being active in real estate to some extent is hmm. just a huge opportunity. Yeah, it's important. Let's shift gears a little bit. I want to talk about... Um relationship um you know with with investors how important it is you've been doing this for a while and, and cultivating that relationship of having um you know doing as you say saying as you do being ethical all of that stuff comes along with raising capital and building those good characteristics for people mm -hmm. to continue because with people they invest in it more than the company they really invest in, in you right you, you know how the, the relationship that you have with them how transparent you are, uh, the integrity piece. Let's talk about that a little bit because that's like the, those are like the main ingredients to oh, yeah. invest relations, right? Well, it's core values. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. and I, I tell people, down to that. employees that you know come in trying to do this, it's like you you are selling yourself. Yes, there's the asset, whether that's the fund or the trustee, but more than anything, they're investing in you. And when I I take it very seriously, I'm very transparent probably to a fault, you know, mm -hmm. but I want 
people to know the ins and the outs and the good and the bad, but also know that we're going to be there in the event that there's hiccups, right? This is not a transactional type of investment. I have clients. I had a guy come in today, physically come into our office. He's selling us his rental property. He's an investor of mine in our fund. And I've done business with him for 18 years. Um, he's 80 years old. So it's very relationship driven. Mm-hmm. Um, and I love people, that. Yep. People are like, how do you grow your database? Are you on podcasts? I said, yeah, but honestly, it's more referrals. It's, hey, I've been investing with you for 10 years. My kids have a little bit of money. What can they do? You know, and, and if you're transparent and honest with people and you are responsive, you know, they call, they have a question. Even if we don't have an answer, my team is told you get back to them by end of business. I like that. I love that. Yep. I don't, I don't put up with that. It's my biggest. (laughs) People don't respond, whether it's investing or just customer service. Yep. Yep. Once they get the money, that's it. I got the money. That's it. And that's, I'm glad you brought this up because these are, really some of the things that I myself focus on as well with invest relationship, communication, 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 transparency, yes. transparency all day long. They, they, I, I'm available if you want to speak to me on Sunday. I block out times because I know these are busy, busy professionals that are busy during the week. They may have an hour to, to Saturday, Sunday. And if you make that time available, it's better than Wall Street, right? They can yes. barely get anybody on the phone. They can't see behind the curtain what's happening on the deal. Um, so yeah, continue, you know, developing those relationships and cultivating them really it's a, it's a win-win situation because they get a chance to connect with a company like yours that, um, they can depend on to help them build a nest egg, right? In the same way from your side, you can have that relationship with the investor to continue, um, you know, the mission that you guys are trying to do, um, with the raising capital yeah, and deploying absolutely. it and the whole whole thing. So yeah, you want to expand on that? Yeah. I mean, investors that invest with us, they know the risk going in, right? I mean, most of them are very sophisticated. We're very open verbally about, hey, these are the risks. I mean, there's risk in everything you invest in. Let's just be honest. But um, the more open and the more open those lines of communication are with your fund members or your investors that are buying trustees, even if it's bad news, you know, it's, hey, here's our challenge, here's our hurdle, but we're here to get you through that. People are just so appreciative of that, um, you know, and, and that goes down to just not calling in, but, you know, our fund reporting is extremely transparent on a quarterly basis. Um, and, and I do think that that bodes to the fact that we've been able to raise a fair amount of capital. And our clients that are invested with us have been here for years. I mean, we rarely have people pull out. And, and I think it, it circles back to just our open lines of communication. I'm the same as you. I, I give my cell phone out and people think I'm nuts. But here's the thing. If I was investing money and I had questions or concerns, I would want to be able to communicate with the person that was responsible or, you know, um, the person I need to go to to get the right answers. And I, I just I, I don't believe in, hey, we're only eight to five. You can't call in. You need to send me an email. That's not how we roll. Yeah. That's that it, the relationship needs to be real. I mean, it's more than sometimes it turn more than just financial friends. You know, you, you yeah, your 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 family doing things with their family, and it just really gets connected. So, um, I think all of this stuff you mentioned is very important. It's like the the customer for life program. Not yeah. to put it sort of in that way, but um, you know, based off of that. But um, yeah, you talked about risk. We kind of covered a lot. You talked about the risk, make, educating them on the risk. And I know you guys do further education with your investors. I know you have a whole program. Mm-hmm. Um, I see the assets coming down the pipe the way you guys uh, put it out. And um, I think those are very attractive yields. <laughs> return. Yeah. So yeah, you guys have some good stuff coming out. You want to talk about that? The deal list that you guys sent out uh, yeah. for opportunities? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, like I said, we, we have the, the funds that we manage, which are a nice passive way to invest. Um, and it, you know, it kind of boils down to the investor's appetite, right? Are they looking for something just very passive that's backed by residential real estate? The funds are a nice option. But I have a lot of very active investors that like to fund deals on their um, or buy trustees or first liens, whatever you want to call them. And so these are all these loans that we originate through our fund. We also sell that paper. And 
that that type of investor typically has a different appetite. They're saying, okay, yeah, it's great that this borrower is going to pay me and I'm potentially going to earn 10% on my on my money, but I actually kind of like the upside risk that there's a 30% equity play in this loan. And, you know, if they don't pay me, I'll just take it back and I might have higher yields than 10%. So, you know, I like to be open with those types of clients that are looking at trustees because I do think there's some bad operators out there that sell trustees and people don't know what they're getting into. You know, I, I recently had a client who got a little greedy and decided to do a deal on him on his own and didn't get a recorded lien against the property. And now the guy's not paying him and he lent him a hundred grand. It's like, you should know, like this is the due diligence package we give you. You look for those for recorded mortgages. So, you know, I think it boils down to really understanding what our investors goal and their strategy is and their their risk you know um profile and like i said our passive people like the fun but i have a lot of really aggressive investors that like the the trustee side of things so the security in both is when you buy a trustee you're buying a lien against the property it's a first lien uh against that property so now they're the lien holders when they invest in the fund the fund owns all those assets. So either way, it's the same security, but the funds are diversified over hundreds of liens. The first trustees, you may have all your money in one. So, um, you know, really just, I think it's getting to know the people, like you said, it's relationships. So understanding what their end goal is, how risk adverse they are, and then just kind of determining which path they want to go through. Yeah, that's great. Thanks for coming on the show and sharing with us. If you want to Give some contact information uh, if anyone's Absolutely. interested in seeing any of those deals you guys have. Where they yep. can, uh... Yeah, they can always visit our website and that is securedinvestmentcorp.com. Uh, we've got information about our funds on there. We even have a fund that you don't have to be accredited to go into. So that's nice for family members that maybe aren't necessarily at that accredited status. Um, and it's got a, a $1,000 minimum. And then also, like you mentioned, all of our trustees or our mortgages are on there too. So a lot of people go to our website. Again, that's securedinvestmentcorp.com. And they can actually see the inventory of uh, trustees or notes that we have there. Yeah, that's great that you guys offer that opportunity. Um, you know, not everyone reached that accreditation level. So it gives families a chance to put their money together from the IRAs or, or yep. non-qualified money they may have. And take down one of those uh, passive uh, liens. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's not passive. It's actually packed it because it may be some work involved. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Managing it. But thanks for coming on the show. Another great episode, PFREI. I'm your host, Fuquan Bilal. We had a really great show today. We talked about raising capital. We covered a lot today. <laughs> yeah, we could have probably talked forever. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for having me on the show. And I'll, I'll see you somewhere in the circles, I'm sure. Yes. Thank you, Fuquan. You're welcome. Have a great day.